Hi, this is a recording of a website article titled Brave New World Life, and this is about mind parasites. Okay, I'm gonna read this right here, and it says one idea that was a clear breakthrough for me and many others on a similar path to self-discovery was the idea of the independent and autonomous existence of the ego self. Synthesized and crystallized perhaps most eloquently by Eckhart Tolle in his The Power of Now and A New Earth, the idea that the ego, both individual and collective, is not just an innate aspect of the human psyche, but a life force of its own resonated a deeper truth and awakening in many. The idea is anything but new, of course. Toll's work, like that of many others, even before him, were only resounding and synthesizing the same truth using different metaphors and analogies. Yet, I believe that the metaphor and the analogy can make an enormous difference to our collective understanding of anything and hence why the storyteller had always such a prominent and respected role in any community because he or she could tap into the hidden memories of the collective and weave the past with the present and future. Understanding our ego consciousness using the right metaphors can also help us come to terms with an otherwise unresolved mystery puzzle. But here is a hint to, what to what's to follow. It was designed to be a mystery puzzle. When I came across an article by Paul Levy on the idea of mind parasites, I couldn't believe how much the idea resonated with so many realizations, research, and experiences I had built about the subject of the ego along the years. Paul has delved quite deeply into understanding what the Native Americans called the Wetiko, and what he described as the self-destructive virus of the mind. The Wetiko brings about the darkest and most destructive aspects of humans, but has at the same time the potential to help us awaken to our true nature as free and creative beings. I believe that what Paul refers to as Wetiko or the mind parasites, with reference to Colin Wilson's supernatural metaphysical cult thriller with the same name, is what others refer to as the ego, or at least the most essential aspects of it. But the analogy to mind parasites is extremely important in telling, and here I want to go through why this is so. One of the most fascinating aspects about understanding the ego as a virus of the mind is that it was designed to be hidden or occult. The program of our ego consciousness will try to trip us every time we come closer to uncover its plot. The ego, or Watiko, is a self-perpetuating program, and its survival very much depends on not being exposed to the light of our consciousness. It has to remain covert in its operations. The analogy to the mind virus here is quite apt, because in reality, the ego, rather than just being a shadow or an aspect of our psyche, is a designed program to run within another program in the background without being discovered like a Trojan horse or a virus using computer-related terminology. It also has regulating and defense mechanisms that enable it to remain hidden. Distraction is one of the main ones. As soon as you start suspecting and then uncovering its mechanisms, it will spin you off another direction through distraction. In other words, it will start playing with your perceived needs, priorities, and urgencies, thus making you believe that there is something more important and urgent to put attention to where we'll create some kind of drama with some painful memory or puts to your attention something that will stir up some emotion. It's like creating a smokescreen or an illusion. The ego, or Watiko, is a true master in this because it is in the design of the program. It is self-regulating, adaptive, and designed to keep itself hidden because if we uncover it long enough and work on it, it will just ch change or die. What is in other places referred to as deep reprogramming of the self and in, in extreme levels the death of the ego although whether it is a final death is highly debatable pool of forgetfulness another of its most powerful mechanisms is to keep itself from being uncovered is how some somehow making us forget forgetfulness is the overarching fundamental problem in us humans 
if you think hard about it. We tend to forget on both an individual and collective level. We forgot our true nature, our freedom, power, connection to nature, and the cosmos at large. We forget our lessons, our past mistakes, our histories, our triumphs and defeats. On a personal level, we forget to pursue our dreams. We immediately forget the potency of an epiphany or a deep realization. This is purely the program of the Wetiko. It is programmed to hack the system and throw you in a pool of forgetfulness every time you are onto something precious, life-affirming, self-realization, or actualization. This happens on an individual level, but is then reflected into the collective. Its nature is to preserve itself by holding you back from becoming who you really are, free, creative, powerful, and divine. The Ghost in the Network the most interesting part of talking about the Wetiko or ego as a mind parasite or virus is its autonomy and self-organizing nature, as hinted in the opening lines. Now, the way to really understand this is to think of your individual ego as not being any way personal to you. What do I mean? Try to see you, your friends, colleagues, family, etc., as a social group, a cluster or group within a larger group, which society or the whole human population at its at extreme. These are networks or social systems wherein the individuals are parts of the whole system. We communicate, share, interact, and most of all, reflect each other. Nikitas Lohmann had made a very interesting point when he observed that communication predates the particular individuals who are doing the communication. Sounds weird, right? Well, think again. The ideas, language, cultural habits, etc. used to make the communication were already alive and active before the particular communicators, let's call them Mr. A and Mrs. B. Mr. A and Mrs. B both created the communication through using language, ideas, consensual reference to reality, etc. And at the same time, the language, norms, cultural habits, etc. are using Ms. A, Mr. A and Mrs. B as a medium to per perpetuate and reinforce themselves within the network. In other words, the whole system is alive and kept alive by moving through the interactions and communications of its parts, humans. The ego works exactly in the same way. It is not particular to anyone. It is an independent, autonomous life force that uses people in a social network as its host. It can flow, move, reorganize itself through that network, as mentioned by Paul Levy in his article, if you are about to reveal or uncover some life-changing realization or truth about yourself, it will use others literally as automatons to get you to you and distract you, hurt you, discourage you, or disenfranchise from tapping into the life-affirming creativity that is within you. I have always observed, in fact, how bigotry, hatred, racism, intolerance, etc., work through people as a medium when they are unconscious. Sometimes sometimes people do something insane collectively, like genocides, atrocities, voting for the wrong thing, attempts to block a creative idea that will change and open the minds of others. If in a sober moment you ask them why they did it, they will be confused or, as it happens, create a rational explanation that justifies their irrational fear or insanity. Of course, this is not being true to themselves, but they are not completely at fault for doing the act, but of being unconscious and left to be used by the Watiko. The Endless Sleep Regarding the point above of using people who are unconscious as automatons, another important part of its mission for survival is in fact to keep people unconscious. Spiritual awakening is its ultimate enemy because it entails, among other things, to see things as they are in all their transparency and glory including the Wetiko, but most of all realizing the true nature and potential of its host. Once the virus feels threatened by its host becoming conscious, it will use other hosts to infect the person again and again in attempts to keep everything in status quo. Fighting back a tougher fight. Yet again, this was another perspective from Paul Levy's deep understanding of the Wetiko that fully converges with my observations. This is important to note and be aware of. Every time we are onto something big that has come close to a major turning point or self-realization, the Waitiko or Ego will start fighting harder. It puts up its firepower by a few notches. Collectively, it is even more so. 
As we are evolving and shifting in consciousness as a species, the way Tico is going to give one last big fight to the end, just like a cornered beast. It knows that its days are counted, but it will not concede defeat. It has to fight, and it will. So, for those of you who are somehow upset, let down, or losing hope with still seeing so much resistance to a changing world, be aware that when things get harder, it only means that we are getting closer and closer to actually breaking through. And that's the end of the article. I'm going to leave a, uh, a, a link to the article. It's uh, it's an old article that I have had in my bookmarks. Um, I just uh, like reading it. It was about uh, mind viruses, and uh, I think that's kind of a per uh, important the ego as a virus, uh, ego viral viruses in the mind as the ego. Um, there's a book by uh, a guy named Paul Libby. He wrote a book about the uh, Indians, the uh, ancient Indians who uh, believed in uh, parasite, cannibalistic parasite of humanity that has existed with us from time immemorial, which um, is a, uh, it, it's a man-eater. It, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't give anything back. It's like a pirate. And, um... I guess that could be why, like, the Catholics, they came over there and they, like, thought these people had, like, the devil in them or something. That could have been what that was. Because they were experimenting what they were doing. They were using, like, psychedelics and stuff. Well, anyways, I'm going to leave. A, I've, I've known about um this writing of Dispelling What Tico. It's by Paul Levy. He talks about... Uh, the Watiko uh, mind virus, um, he gets into like different archetypical ideas, and yeah, it's kind of an interesting book. He also wrote another one called Quantum Revelation, which is about quantum theory, quantum physics, and um, I have that on audio, but you can actually buy that on Audible. The, if you have the Audible app on your phone, you can actually buy that. And uh, also, I, I actually have both of his books. I have both of his books on audio format. The Spelling with Tico and... Uh, well, the full title of The Dispelling with Tico is The Spelling with Tico, uh, Defeating the Curse of Evil. And then the other one is Quantum Revelation. And, um, yeah, the guy's a pretty interesting character. He, um... He went through, he said he went through a lot of uh, darkness in his early adulthood. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, he, uh, he has a lot of insight into human consciousness and human psyche. And, um, it, it's more than just a religious thing. He does quote and uses a lot of religious connotation. He uses a lot of it. Uh, but he also gathers from other religious other traditions too, and not, uh, it's not necessarily just a Christian, which it's kind of a, not a very exciting thing for me, because he doesn't, he doesn't, cause he's not an orthodox, but nonetheless, he has a, a cool understanding, and something different and unique about his uh, theories, um, but like anything, it's to take one of the grain of salt, like anything. And what he's saying could be completely untrue and not and not a fact at all. And um, because there's many things that we all that we all could make mistakes. And um, not Jesus Christ was the only one that was a true prophet, you know, the only true teacher. But um, nonetheless, I'm just gonna. I just wanted to read this article and express this um, kind of an idea of this teaching that. Kind of does is doesn't nobody really understands this, and they don't really understand. Take it to heart, but you actually see this kind of thing in like horror movies, scary movies, like there's a, a hidden evil thing in the back of your head trying to kill you or something like that. That's what this Watiko is all about. It's all about this this, this evilness that that is a uh, you know, especially since the, 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 the all these pandemics and everything. This is it, it's just an illusion. But it has to be. It has to be uh, understood, and taken for what it is, and and uh, fought against and combated. And um, 
uh, yeah, I was, I was actually reading uh, some, you know, there's actually a, a website that I was looking at. I also will link that too. It's, uh, <clears throat> let me see here. It's, it's just a website about Catholic, uh, you know, prayers to um, demons and whatever, and the uh, people, people that, uh, you know, they have all this, they have, the, the Catholics have this rich tradition of exorcism and everything, which the Watiko, um, the, the, the books by Paul Levy, a book by Paul Levy, is pretty much kind of like an exorcism, but it's not through, it's not with the, the this uh, Catholic idea necessarily. Well, well, uh, yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I just wanted to uh, to read that, um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll link the. And I'm not, and I'm not telling you, and not, not a. I don't know. So, anyways, um, yeah. It had a it had a few prayers of an exorcism about um, breaking uh, evil. Like there was one about Freemasons. It was a very very long prayer about masonry and some of the people that get into masonry <sighs> make all these evil packs and uh, it's all it, it it was extremely it was kind of weird. Like I was reading it and then I was like, damn, this is horrible horrible shit. Like people get involved in this shit. They really get involved in Freemasonry and say all these horrible, oh, horrible, horrible things, it, it's freaking horrible, um, like, uh, all these, like, I don't even want to get into it, but, um, anyways, um, just wanted to make this video, I just, uh, I, I like, I want to get into something and say, uh, make a video, and, uh, it's just my voice, I'm not gonna, going on camera, but, uh, I, I might try to do more than this next time. And I'm gonna make something else. Try to be like a real blogger, so to speak, instead of just a book reader, which is an, which I like I like reading books a lot, but it's more of an in-depth thing to get into, uh, to talk actually, to get into speaking from the soul, from your heart and soul, like a lot of people do. It's kind of cool, but um, it's an interesting. It's an interesting thing, and like some people, they have their YouTubes and they make a name for themselves, and, you know, whatever, I'm not, I don't know if I'm trying to do that, but it could be something that I will really, should probably have already invested in, but I just haven't been that cunning, or smart, or brave enough, uh, to, uh, pursue, for some reason, some idiot, but anyways, <laughs> I'm, I'm just signing off, I'm gonna, leave this here if you guys listen to it. Thanks a lot. Have a great have a good one. God bless.